Hello everybody and welcome to our last lesson in Unit 2 Formulas and Constructions. Today our objective will be we will be able to use a compass and straight edge to construct an angle congruent to a given angle and the bisector of a given angle. And we will be able to use the angle addition postulate. So let's get going. The angle addition postulate is just a fancy way of saying add two smaller adjacent angles to make a larger angle. And the key is that the angles have to be adjacent. And you remember what adjacent means? It means next to each other and sharing one side. Let's look at a little drawing here. We have the angle PQR and let's assume that that angle has a measurement of 40 degrees and then we have right next to it sharing um, the ray QR. We have the angle RQS and maybe that angle has a measurement of 30 degrees and then we can say that together that bigger angle which goes from P to Q all the way to S this angle here has a measurement of 40 degrees plus 30 degrees in other words a total of 70 degrees using our symbols we can write this like this the measurement of angle PQR plus the measurement of angle RQS is equal to the measurement of angle PQS. And in today's lesson we will construct angles and angle bisectors and the angle addition postulate might come in handy there. So let's look at our first construction. Construct an angle congruent to a given angle. And when we say that, what we really mean is copy the angle. Copy a given angle. So we start by being given an angle and maybe sometimes they also give you a ray if they didn't give you the ray then we have to draw that ourselves so in this example we were given an angle and no ray so we just go ahead using our handy dandy ruler to draw our own little ray nice little ray down here and we are good to go so we start with the center of our compass at the vertex of the angle always start at the vertex of the angle and we draw open this up a little more draw a nice arc that crosses both sides of the angle and then without changing the width of our compass we go to the end point of our ray and we draw another arc which is the same or at least as big as the arc we have above so this is important always have the center 
of your compass on the vertex and then you draw an arc first here where you have your angle and you draw another arc which is at least as big on the ray that was given to you or that you created yourselves. Draw an arc through the angle and copy that arc on the ray. Make sure that your second arc is at least as big as the first arc. Now we're going to take our compass, going to put it on one of the new intersection points that we have created, and we're going to measure how far those two intersection points are away from each other. Almost. This looks to be right here. We don't have to mark anything. We just measure the distance. And now, without changing the width of our compass, we move it to the intersection point that we have created on our ray. And now, we draw an arc which crosses the first arc, or actually technically the second arc that we created, the first arc that we have created on this ray. We now have two arcs crossing each other, creating another intersection point. So we measured the distance between our two intersection points on the arc. I have marked them with B and C. And then we drew an arc to copy the distance from our ray. Now the last thing we need to do is we need to draw a ray from the endpoint of our given ray to the intersection point of our two lines, excuse me, our two arcs. So I'm just going to put my ruler up here, make sure that it's nicely lined up. This looks about right and draw a line from our endpoint through the intersection point. And here is our new angle. Now we could use protractor to measure and see if the angles are about the same, but they look pretty good to me. So what did we do? We draw the line from the endpoint of the ray through the intersection of the two arcs. Then let's go to our next construction. Now we're going to construct an angle bisector. In other words, we're going to cut an angle into two congruent angles.
and we of course start off being given an angle and we now draw an arc that intersects both sides of the angle. Remember always put the center of your compass on the vertex of the angle. I'm going to open it up a little bit. I'm going to draw a nice large arc that intersects both sides of our angle. Draw an arc that intersects both sides of the angle. And remember, always start at the vertex. Always put the center of your compass on the vertex. Now we have created two nice intersection points with the sides of the angle. I'm going to call them Q and R. And we're, these are the next two important points for us because we're going to use our compass. And starting at each of these intersection points, draw two arcs that intersect inside of the angle. So they don't have to be super large arcs, but they have to be, have to go further than halfway, and they have to intersect inside of the angle that we have. Here we go. We don't need this part, but we have two arcs that intersect, created a new intersection point. Again, as with all these constructions, it's important that now we haven't changed the width of our compass, but we have an intersection point inside of our angle, and that's equal distance from Q and R. Starting at the intersection points Q and R, we have drawn two arcs that intersect inside of the circle excuse me, of the angle. And now the last thing we need to do is we need to draw a ray that goes from the vertex of our angle to our new intersection point. Let's line up our ruler again, nice and snug. That looks about right. The ray from the vertex through our intersection points of the through two arcs. And this ray is the bisector of our angle, creating two smaller angles that are congruent. And I'm giving them congruent marks to indicate that. So that's it for the constructions today. Um, again, I realize that you weren't able to do all these at home. Write down the notes. Don't forget to write down our last part. Draw the intersecting, or I should say, bisecting ray. through the vertex of our angle 
and the intersection point We will practice with composite and straight edge in class. See you there.